welcome to a very, very exciting video. I am here with one of my dearest, loveliest, pregnantest friends, Robin. Hi. And hi. And um, <laughs> you will know Robin if you watch the vlogs because she makes regular appearances. And you will also know that Robin is a rock star when it comes to food and creation and healthy bellies. And she is so much so of a rock star that she has written a book about a it. A book. A real book. It's gorgeous, <laughs> which we have a copy we have which a we will show you. <laughs> and, drum roll please, you know how much I love sauerkraut. Robin here is an expert in the fermentation business and which will help you do your business, which she will tell you about. And yeah, she right is also a pro at making sauerkraut. And when Robin suggested we make this video, I was like, yes. And I knew you guys would be jumping up and down in your seats, like doing a cheer right now, because I know that some of you live in places where you can't get sauerkraut, so you need to know how to make it. I'm not an expert in the whole fermentation business. What I'm an expert in is making it really simple. First off, why is sauerkraut so important? Why are we even talking about mm -hmm. fermentation? First off, fermentation is where you get that good bacteria from. So you want a healthy belly, but most importantly, we're thinking about a healthy body. Healthy body means vitality, energy, and yes, being able to poop on the regular. <laughs> So we want our guts to be strong and the best way for that to happen is to populate it with beautiful, wonderful microorganisms that do their work, do their job, mm -hmm. and keep us strong and healthy. Mm -hmm. So we're starting here. Okay, so let's get started. Here's what you need and it's really not much. Like I said, I tried to keep this as basic and simple as possible. So a head of beautiful organic cabbage. Very simple, this costs like a dollar. You know I have a small head. <laughs> I have a really large <laughs> head, so this is perfect for mine. Hello, Laura. Hello. <laughs> we can't help ourselves. So you've got a beautiful head of cabbage, and any kind of cabbage works, but we just stuck with basic green cabbage. Next up, we've got some caraway seeds. That is that yummy flavor and just regular sauerkraut, but you don't even need those. I really like I, I do too, and juniper berries. Juniper we berries. We don't have any today, but you can add them, and there's you can add a whole bunch of stuff. You can add ginger, you can add turmeric, but again, keeping it basic. So we've got our caraway turmeric. seeds. Turmeric. Yeah. Turmeric. I still say turmeric. <laughs> and then one of our favorite ingredients, beautiful Himalayan pink sea salt. Any good quality sea salt will do. Celtic is great. Himalayan is lovely, but you need a good quality sea salt. And you need good quality Very ingredients important. in general for quality sauerkraut. All right, so first thing what you're gonna do is wash your hands, which we did. And first thing you wanna do is just remove a couple of the big outer leaves, because you'll wanna save these to stuff on top to make sure that your cabbage stays below the liquid line. So you put those aside. So you've got your cabbage, and then you wanna make sure that you have your fermentation vessel. That sounds fancy for mason jar. So we've got a one quarter <laughs> mason jar here. The wide mouth ones are great because you can put your hand in there and really pack it down, which you'll see. So you wanna mm -hmm. have that and a lid. Does it, do these need to be, oh, what's the word? Sterilized. Yes. Great question. The first time I made sauerkraut, it did not work. And that's because I was sterilizing everything, washing it, boiling it, drying it, right. my hands. No, you okay. want some of the bacteria. You want the microorganisms that are already present. It's fine, so you don't have to be hyper sterile or over clean. Again, okay. makes it way easier. Right. And then you're just gonna chop up your cabbage. So we'll get rid of the base here. And then you're gonna go ahead and just take out the core. So one little cut here. And another one. <laughs> <Up> there. <laughs> and you've got your corn. <laughs> I can't believe that I found my cabbage. <laughs> Next thing, all we're gonna do is shred up this cabbage. So okay. I'm gonna cut this in half so it gets a little bit smaller. Again, so we've got a quarter right here. And yeah. you do wanna get it as thin as possible. So spend a little extra time just really getting that as thinly sliced as possible because it's, I just like it better this way. You can leave it a little chunkier, but I also find that when it's thinner, it ferments better. You've just got a better guarantee that it will work. That's my ideal. Then my in our bowl. my cooking technique, I call it the chop and bung method. I don't know Not if like it's a, a bong, like a no. smoking <laughs> vessel. I don't know if it's an actual <laughs> word, but that's what I always call it, is the chop and bung. I like to chop things up, bung them in the pan, 
And that that's is. that. All right, so we've got our cabbage all chopped up and depending on the size of your cabbage, you may have some extra. We had a lot extra, so we may pull from that. I wanted this to be manageable. It's about two pounds of vegetable for a quart. All right, in our bowl, we've got our shredded cabbage and we're gonna add a good amount of salt. So I didn't measure, but it's about a tablespoon usually. Mm -hmm. um, and you can taste it and then always add more. And then you're gonna go ahead and just take your hand, hands, use both, and get in there. And what you're gonna do is use that salt to wilt the cabbage. And it's gonna pull all the liquid out of the cabbage and that's gonna be the liquid that submerges the vegetable that we build up that beautiful fermentation process in. So this can take a little while. We might hang out for a little bit while we're doing, see how it's while we're doing this. Here's yeah. the reason why you want to make it yourself because different- And I get my bacteria in it. You get your bacteria grows and then also you get different strains of bacteria at different points during the fermentation process. So what bacteria is present at two weeks where this sits is gonna be different than two months and you want all of them. So what about when I buy it from the supermarket or the top and it sits in my fridge for longer? Does that change the bacteria? A little bit, but not necessarily. It's more when it's fermenting on your counter. Hmm. So yeah, what so you pretty much, a refrigerator is pretty much a fermentation stopping device. And if you guys can start to see here, see we're starting to get some it shiny It's starting to get liquid. Juicy. So nice and juicy, oh, that's exactly so the good. I'm like really, I mean like You're really, you gotta like, can't be afraid of this. All right, so we've been doing this for quite a while and it depends on your cabbage. You know, some cabbage get, cabbages get really juicy really quickly. Quick, Quickie. Juicy, quick, cabbagey, juicy, quickie. Depending quickie, juicy. on if the cabbage has been sitting around in a while, so you really want to try and get a fresh cabbage. Depends on the time of the year. Some of them will just naturally give you more liquid. And I'll show you guys, but you can add a little water to it at the end if you don't get as much. So basically what you're aiming for here is this gorgeous, glossy Wow, it does look cabbage, really And then you yummy. can squeeze liquid out of it. Ooh. See that's... those bubbles? That's fermentation already happening just from the salt and the vegetable. That's amazing. I know, it's, it's a science project. All right, so I'm at the point where I can start packing in my jar. So to this, <laughs> we're gonna add some caraway seeds. And you know, half a teaspoon, teaspoon. And those don't need to be rubbed all the way in, like we just rubbed the salt. You can just add them. And then you wanna taste. So it should be really, really salty. Mm. Perfect. Kind of like almost like potato chips or pretzels. It should have a little, almost more mm. salt flavor than mm. you would like, mm. because that will help with the fermentation process and help keep it crunchy. All right, so I'm gonna start packing my jar. So we got me smush and a one more jar. Squiggle. And we're gonna pack. <laughs> smush and squiggle, I'm gonna pack. And we're making giant messes here. Usually at this point- This is not a mess. Oh, this isn't a this mess? Is this is not a mess, a mess for me. You should have seen us after the pumpkin carving video and most of my cooking videos. So what I did is I packed some in the bottom, just a little bit, about an inch or two, mm -hmm. and then I smush it down with my fist so that all that liquid can come up and start covering the vegetable. Because we want to make sure that the yes. liquid covers everything so we don't get mold in there and yes. we can create that beautiful anaerobic environment. So you want to make sure that there's always liquid. So if you need to pour a little bit more water on top, you can do that. Obviously you don't want to use a lot of water because you want it to be a concentrated, delicious flavor. Um, but you can use a little water and then using those leaves to pack it down on top. When's it going to be done? So process-wise, it can you can eat it after a few days. It just won't be very fermented. Mm -hmm. um, I'll typically let mine go anywhere from two weeks to two months. Yeah, you're like that's what you got to mm. do. See all that liquid coming up? Mm. That looks amazing. Yes. And then that's enough, and we can put the leaves. Just want to sort of like get you all in here, get a little more liquid. But that's plenty for this jar, oh. and we can keep going in the next jar. That's and so then what cute. we do. So make sure, again, you, I would probably spend another minute or so getting all the liquid up. Should I start adding this to that? And top? maybe do a little, a little bit of this. Cause we've got some of that. There we go. Ah, lovely. Okay, so we've got all of our crap submerged and then this is where those leaves came in that we saved from the beginning. Okay. So you just want to sort of roll it up and tuck it in here so it keeps your kraut 
below from that getting line. out. I never thought of that. That's amazing. Uh, Love it. <laughs> this goes once. This is one of those things that you'll get the hang of, and you will eventually be doing this in your sleep. I promise. All right. So we've got our trout here, and we're below the cabbage leaf line. And just so you know, once you eat this, you want to discard these. Don't eat the cabbage. Don't leaves. eat the cabbage leaves because those Why are going to be above that liquid line. Remember, that's our safety mm -hmm. line. So then what you're gonna do is take this and just put it out on your shelf. The only other thing you've got to do is about oh, every, you have to burp it. Did you know what I was gonna yes. say? Yes. You actually just burp in it. in true baby fashion. Yes, you, everything needs a little bit of care and oh. tender tenderness. So what you're gonna do is once a day or once every couple of days, if it's cold, you've got a couple of days warm once a day, is you're just gonna unscrew your lid let mm -hmm. some of that oxygen escape, mm -hmm. and then screw it right back on. And if you don't? If you don't, it might explode. So you've got your crowd here, and then guess what? You can taste it. It's totally fine. So after a few days, oh, okay. take a couple of the leaves from underneath and, and taste it and see if it tastes the way you want it to. If you want it to taste stronger, let it sit out longer. You want it to have more punch, let it go longer. If you like it not with you know milder flavors, you can eat it earlier, and that's fine. That's and amazing. Let's look at all this. So there's your little burp. That's all. Okay. Lid back on. Every day. Oh gosh. Every day. All right. So here is our before. This is what. It's, it's so beautiful. It start. Isn't it gorgeous? Look at that. It's beautiful. And you're like you're like you a little bit of your make, soul is in here. Like you your could energy make is rainbow in. one. You absolutely can make a rainbow one. If you do beet, it, the beets will get through everything. If you put the right at the bottom, that you might have a better chance. So here's your before, and we've got a little cheat from one of our, our favorite jarred companies, but this is what it's gonna look like eventually. So it would start to look like this, I would say, in the two to three mark, three weeks, depending mm -hmm. your environment. But you see it's juicy and rich and soft, but still a little bit of crunch. That's what that salt does. It mm -hmm. preserves the crunch, and it's the best thing ever. It's the best thing ever. The best thing ever. I love sauerkraut. Me too. We made our sauerkraut. Yeah. We've got our big, beautiful jar here. Laura's gonna keep going from that big old bowl from behind. And then next time I come over, we're gonna have a sauerkraut party. Amazing. We're just gonna eat all of it at once. Don't eat all if of it. If it's, it's not still gone already. Already. <laughs> <laughs> So. I am going to make more sauerkraut. I yes. promise you yes. that. Promise you that. You will see it in the vlog. I will make more sauerkraut. I'm going to make different varieties. And I would love you guys to make it too. So if you've watched through to the end of this video, you are enough excited about sauerkraut that you definitely need to make it. So it is super easy. Now you've seen how easy it is. Make sure that you go get yourself some equipment and cabbages and get it rocking. Take some pictures so that I can see them and Robin can see them. And that is the most exciting thing ever. And then tell your friends, send them this video so that they can make their own sauerkraut too. Because it is so, so, so good for you. And if you want to know more, you share info more about sauerkraut and why it's so good for you in your book. Yes. So. Cue Robin's book. Hey guys, Yay. I wrote a book. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> yes she did. So I wrote a book called Go With Your Gut that was heavily sparkled up and energized by Laura and our work together and superhuman breakfast is in here and so many amazing things that I learned being part of this world. So I'm excited to share about it. This comes out February 9th, depending when I you're watching the video. I just want to give you a flick through oh. because it is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Yes. The Yay. pictures are so Stunning. It's my book baby. It's beautifully laid out. I love, I mean, just it just is gorgeous. It's called Go With Your Gut. And it's about digestion and really connecting to your inner sparkle and there your you intuition. Go. Sauerkraut. And how to make sauerkraut. So if you yeah. want the recipe for this, it's in this book, plus other awesome, easy things that you can ferment for all those great, yeah. good this probiotics. Is, this is amazing. Really, really amazing. Thank so congratulations. Thank you. So I'm excited. really excited for my copy. <laughs> We're gonna be going to Robin's book launch on February 4th. Yes, and come um, to New York if you're around. Be and... taking you on the vlog. So I will put a link to get Robin's book underneath this video. Also, all the details on sauerkraut making and if we put these Fun pictures recipes. together into a blog post, we will link them all below. So yay, 
Amazing. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm so glad let's I got to more. show you. Yeah, let's, let's, let's ferment more. everything. Yeah, if you want to <laughs> see more cooking videos with Robin and I, let us know in the comments what you would like. Let us know what you liked about this. And um, make How sure you going. Yeah. give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you are new to my channel. And we will see you very soon. I'll see you tomorrow for another vlog. And we will be back for some more cooking videos. Yep. There's a whole book of stuff we need to make here. <laughs> Let's do it. Woo! Yay! Mwah! Sauerkraut party! Bye! Love you guys! Bye! I don't want to clap because I'm going to get sauerkraut <laughs> smushed in my face. Action! Rolling like a cabbage! <laughs> <laughs>